It's Kat and I'm back because you know the byline. What once was will be again, at least in our story, until Daenerys breaks the will. <laughs> and we are going to use history, mythology, and astrology <clears throat> to divine the mysteries of the Game of Thrones. And in this segment, we're going to talk about Jon Snow being Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark's child. And some symbols that we should have paid more attention to, as well as their history along with some other symbols that might lead us to some additional information about who is who and whose parents, um, who's, who Daenerys Targaryen slash whoever the hell she is, parents actually are. One of the important things that we've been talking about is that the backdrop for this story is actually the War of the Roses, and it's been superimposed with a number of legends, particularly Arthurian legend, as well as some concepts of the Vedic traditions, like the seven hells and the seven heavens, and the idea that you're repeating your life and or your soul is recycling until you freaking get it right. And I said in a previous video that if you understand this concept, that the reason he chose this time period was in fact because it is literally the moment that yin and yang come together. <laughs> that it breaks the will, and that it presages a new dawn age. And essentially, the people that make this happen are Henry Tudor and Elizabeth of York. And if you've caught our other videos, which I'll put the links down below, that Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen slash whoever she is are playing Henry Tudor and Elizabeth of York because it's their marriage that A, ends the War of the Roses, and B begins the first breaking of the will <laughs> in regards to lineage and succession to the throne, as well as government, religion, etc. And we're going to talk about some ideas of the, of the three dragons as well as we come up. But in any event, so Rhaegar Targaryen has been 99% <laughs> proven to probably be Jon Snow's father along with Lyanna Stark who was in the Tower of Joy. We just saw that in episode 10. And so I had to reconsider what it was that I was thinking or why I came to the conclusion that it probably wasn't him because there's this idea of yin and yang. So yin and yang are the two opposites as we talked about the ice and fire. But one of the things we need to understand about yin and yang is that the perfect balance isn't just the ice and the fire, but in fact that the ice contains a little bit of fire and the fire contains a little bit of ice or something. So they're not just perfectly one or the other, but the perfect balance is the perfect balance within the two themselves before they come together. Got it? Get it? Okay. So that's number one. Number two is I was led astray by reading something on an internet page that was dedicated to the royalty of, of England, but it was not the official site. So one of the things I talked about was Henry Tudor, a.k.a. Jon Snow, that when he came to the throne, he had caused to be made this badge that had the dragon and the hound as supporters for the royal coat of arms. Now, it was alleged that the dragon was supposed to represent himself and that the hound was supposed to represent Elizabeth of York and that he particularly did, in fact, give her greyhounds, <laughs> that she liked the greyhounds, and he would give them to her as presents. But here's the, here's the reality. The greyhounds were not related to the Yorks, and if I'd figured this out sooner, we'd be in a different place right about now. We would have been ahead of the game like everybody else. So, actually, the greyhound was the badge for the Earl of Richmond. And you have to understand that Henry Tudor was the Earl of Richmond prior to taking the throne. His father had been Edmund Tudor, who had married Margaret Beaufort. And Edmund Tudor was an half-brother to Henry VI. And Henry VI had given his brother, Edmund Tudor, the Earldom of Richmond. And that was the Greyhound symbol. So when Henry Tudor had this made, it had nothing to do with his relationship or his marriage to Elizabeth of York. But it was, in fact, about his own parentage. So his father was 
the Earl of Richmond, and he was the Earl of Richmond, which was this Greyhound. And then the dragon symbolized Wells because, again, if you followed our other videos regarding this information, Henry Tudor claimed to be descended from the ancient kings of Wells all the way back to King Arthur as well as Cadwalder of the Spears. You got the other videos that I made and you can catch some links below. I talked about some of the other symbols that were available or apparent in the Tudor reign. And one of those things that Henry VII had caused to be incorporated into almost everything that he built and stamped his name on, so to speak, was the portcullis. So Henry Tudor's claim to the throne was through his mother, Margaret Beaufort, who was the great-granddaughter of John of Gaunt, who was himself the fourth son of Edward III. And the Beauforts were the illegitimate children of John of Gaunt, later legitimized, and they took their name from a French castle or possession that John of Gaunt had, the Lancastrians had. It was called Beaufort, the beautiful fort. And its insignia was, in fact, the portcullis. And when Henry Tudor came to the throne, he incorporated this portcullis in his insignia, but he stuck a crown over it for its royal relations. So it could show that's where he had his royal relations. Now, in our story, we have... A portcullis but it's associated with the ironwoods down in Dorne and so far we have no freaking idea what their relationship is to anybody we just know that we see this symbol that was traditionally related to Henry Tudor aka Jon Snow it might be just something that's out there that Mr. Martin included it's kind of a red herring one of those red herrings I suppose we'll find out as the story goes on one of the other symbols that I've been holding back on a little bit because I'm still not quite sure how it's going to play out in the story, although we see it happening right now, is the White Rose. So the White Rose was the badge for the Yorkists, and the Lancastrians had picked up for theirs the Red, the red Rose, and when Henry Tudor and Elizabeth of York got married, one of the things that he caused them to have happen as the badge for their house was the Tudor Rose, which was the White Rose of the York superimposed over the Red Rose of the Lancastrians. We actually have this White Rose that's been in our face almost the entire time throughout the Game of Thrones series as well as the story of A Song of Ice and Fire. And this is the White Rose of the Reach. And one of the other things that as I was looking up from the official British heraldry site, which I should have done in the first place regarding Henry Tudor's insignia, um, was the different badges for the different households. And one of these badges was not only the White Rose, but the Yorks had used the White Rose superimposed over the sun and splendor. And this brought to mind the fact that, indeed, we have Elena Tyrell, who is the Queen of Thorns, who's now down in Dorne, making some sort of relationship with the Sands, who are the official rulers of Dorne, whose sigil is, in fact, the Sun and Splendor. So we have the White Rose with the Sun and Splendor. I'm not sure how that's going to play out in relationship to whose relationship official parentage of Daenerys is or not. I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention while we look at um, different symbols and insignias. And in fact, I love Elena Tyrell because she is Cecily Neville. So if you know who Cecily Neville is, she was actually the granddaughter of John of Gaunt. So she and Margaret Beaufort were like third or fourth cousins. And it is in fact how Elizabeth of York had any relationship. She was the fourth or fifth cousin of Henry Tudor before they got married. So Cecily Neville, she was called Proud Sis. And she was actually a Lancastrian, but she ended up marrying Richard, the Duke of York. And when he was making his play for the throne, she totally backed the Yorks all the way down to her sons, who were Edward IV and then Richard III. And by the way, Richard III liked to use that um, white rose over a sun and splendor himself as one of his badges for his household. So, but Cecily Neville did like to deck herself out in the White Roses 
of the Yorks. And you can see these pictures that I'm putting up here. Um, how her headdress, her clothing, everything about her. So you see this is exactly where the Game of Thrones got their idea for how they were dressing our friend Elena Tyrell with all her roses. And the thing that I find super interesting as well is that largely throughout the story, she's used a white rose as her symbol. But now we see her down in Dorne where she, their family symbol is the white rose, you know, superimposed over the sun and splendor. But now her headdress has the red rose as in the Lancastrian. So this is when she starts supporting and there's this idea in Shakespeare, by the way, where she became irritated with her son, Richard III, who people claim that he was mal-shaped and she just never liked him very much in the first place. But it could also be because, you know, he was one of the people who claimed that uh, she had an adulterous affair, which resulted in Edward IV claiming his illegitimacy, amongst many other things. So... You know, he kind of uh, put a, a thorn into his mother, Cecily and Neville's, uh, Cecily and Neville's side, <clears throat> claiming something about her after she'd supported him to get to the throne. So she might have had some bad blood <laughs> regarding that situation. But so now we see Elena Tyrell acting as Cecily Neville slash Elizabeth Woodville, um, making some arrangements for our friend Daenerys Targaryen slash whoever she is to come over. And I think there is a question about who Daenerys's parents are, even though the story seems to spell it out that it's Ares II and Rhaella. I do believe there are questions about that. And I said in another video, I think she's the daughter of a Shardane. I just can't tell you right this second who I think her father is. There are all these symbols at play and we're still doing some research. Um, and I have an idea because Arthurian legend is all over this place. And this is why everybody was pretty sure Rhaegar Targaryen was Jon Snow's father because he was Uther Pendragon to Lyanna's Egraine, <laughs> Duchess of Cornwall, while Robert was Gorlais. So we're going to get to that. But thank you very much. We're going to talk about some more symbols and information. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Talk to you later.